Hi everybody, welcome to this month's free Minecraft Studio monthly workshop class. In today's workshop, I'm going to be featuring the web exclusive, the web download on the Highlight Crafts website that goes along with A Walk Back to Wonderland, which is a fabulous collection of content with over 100 elements in there. And that is the most amazing cushion that goes with that beautiful USB. So I'm going to be using some of that as well as dipping into the USB, of course, which launched last week on Crane Craft, which was fabulous. And I know so many of you loved it. But of course, during these free monthly workshops and these classes, what we do is we um, share more inspiration, more techniques and tips for all levels of Minecraft Studio users. Whether, of course, you started from the very beginning of the Minecraft Studio journey, or again, maybe this was the first USB that you ever sort of dipped your toes into with Minecraft Studio. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. And I know a lot of you out there want the next level, the expertise. We give trickles or small amounts of that, and as well as bringing it back to the beginning process. So there's something for everybody on there. Um, but I'm gonna take you through today the Micro Studio Workshop myself, um, and I will go straight onto the PC now to, to begin with. So onto the PC here, I've actually downloaded my um, web download from Highlight Crafts website onto a USB. And what I'm gonna do is show you, it's just on here, my USB drive and the web download. I'm going to show you a bit of the content on here as well. There's a little bit of a sneak peek, really, because, of course, you can see all of it as soon as you download it. But we've got backing papers on here. So if I just grab the index sheet, you can see what backing papers you've got. So this is all additional content as to what you've got already on that USB. You then have your florals, so your index sheet on here as well with completely brand new florals. You've got peonies, you've got daisies, you've got roses so many beautiful, fresh, vibrant colors to play with on here. And then your images, I think you're absolutely gonna love this because you've got something that I was really hoping for on this USB. And when I found out we were having it as a download, I was so excited because you've got the little hidey house here as well, which you can build up. And I'm gonna show you throughout this same class how you can make this into your own fairy mansion, if you like. Um, where and then we also have your scenes. So in here, an additional section of scenes here to play with. So you can see again, beautiful color tones, completely different compositions and sort of settings of the day um, with different compositions and perspectives in there for you to play with. And then we also have your textures. Now this of course is like an added bonus to every section of content we ever bring you. Uh, but we've got ombres in here, we have that hammered glass, the glitter effects. And we also have some of that sort of hessian texture, which you can see here, if I just enlarge that, it's like a, a beautiful thick weaved fabric. And that, that works really well if you're printing this onto rice paper for texture and things like that. But I'm just gonna select all of these and delete those off the page because we can then start creating our project. Now something I absolutely love to push Minecraft Studio to the boundaries with is making almost your background or your backing paper with an individual file. So going into our images here within our web download, I'm gonna use number 13 here, um, which is this rock. Um, now for this one, what I love is that no matter how big you scale up an image, it will not pixelate. So you can see here, I still have the complete resolution of that image. It's almost photographic um, and it's not started to dis distort. I'm gonna scale it down over the slightly because we don't need it quite that large. And then what I'm going to do is actually zoom out on my, um, page itself so I can see all angles of that image because right now if I was to start manipulating this file some of the actual little boxes here which we use to drag and change the scale um, are overhanging off the edge of the page so this is a really good um, tick it's sort of a technique really um, to make sure that you're always capturing every element so you can see we've zoomed right out onto our page there now within the top section of Minecraft Studio here you have the crop function now what this will allow us to do is literally chop away sections of this image here, this particular file, and we can then make it nice and sharp and tailor it to what we want it to work with. Okay, I'm gonna bring it in a little bit further from that edge and a bit further from this side as well. There we go, and then of course you can then start to tailor it to A4 if that's the size you want it to work into, it's entirely up to you. But I'm thinking for this one, as I'm starting to plan the project in my head, um, you can see this one here will actually distort the image, it stretches it. So if we just go back, here we go. What we can do is as we enlarge it like this, and then actually go into, go back into my crop function, and we can still actually add back in the cropped area. So you can see here, what I'm going to do is continue to enlarge it 
and then crop it in from the side. So I've not distorted my image in by dragging it and stretching it. We've just enlarged it to A4, and then of course we've actually cropped all those edges. So if we go into, let's have a look in here. If we go into print and go into portrait or landscape, I'm gonna make my page landscape, um, which then means I'm left with this space here. Now, if we want to make it an exact card shape, you could go into your overlays on this section up here. So if you go into your overlays, into your card designs, there's so many in here that you can pick to play with. So if we put this in here as an overlay, this here would be my card front. So then what I could do is scale this down, knowing that this is exactly A5 and will fit 100% in the front of there. So when we then go to print this particular image um, as it is, we know that this will be the front of our card. We'd score and fold here. And of course, you could put any sentiments or anything on the back of the card, or of course, your signature if you're making your cards to sell. Um, but that's there a way of being able to 100% always get accurate printing with your projects to 100% sizing. So I'm going to take the overlay off for now because I'm quite content knowing that that is now A5 and is in the accurate position. So to start working on this particular um, file itself, I'm just going to move it central to my screen because for me personally, I always like to work central and then I will crop it, manipulate it and take it to where I want it to be. So I want to work with a secondary file in this one and I'm still working into that web download that we've got there from the website. And this file here, I love. For one, the, the, the scale, the light that's casting over the front of it, you've almost got like a shadow that runs over here, but I think it will look perfect when we start to work with this particular image over the top of this texture that we've made. So I'm gonna focus on this in my center of my page. And before I do anything else, I'm going to copy and paste it. Okay, so I've duplicated that file at the exact same scale and size in. Now with this original one that we started with, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use our scissors function. Now this will give me um, a much more directional cut. Of course, if you were to use your lasso knife here, it's much more freehand, okay? So as you're going around cutting, um, you've got more chance of getting um, precision with maybe florals or something that's very fine and detailed where you maybe want to blur those lines. But um, with scissors, what this will do is allow me to carry on quite a straight cut and then manipulate into those curves as we go around. It's almost like dot to dot with this one. So each time I click down onto here, all I'm essentially doing, there we are, is cutting this out just like that. And it will dot it up for us. And as we go around, that sort of stitched line essentially is, um, is adding like a slight curve. It like molds itself. So what we can do now is select to keep the inner or keep the outer. So let's keep the outer. So we are now left with a window frame, which we either can then overlay onto maybe our secondary one. So if we bring it that to the front, this could sit directly over the top of this, and then we can start to play with the glass pane inside here. So, and you could change the colorways if you wanted a green window, and then you can lay this back over, and then automatically your glass is a diff completely different color. So you're playing with the folders in, in, in separate layers, to create these effects. So this is a, a really fun thing to do because you can see there again now, you've got complete control of changing something to a realistic element, but you're not changing all of the stone at the same time, that's left as it is. But I'm gonna revert it to its original state um, for now. Here we go. And I'm gonna put these two together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm then going to bring in um, a third element. So I'm gonna go back into the actual USB itself, which is our, um, our walk back to Wonderland. Let's have a look here. So I'm gonna go straight back to my artwork. So I'm just going through, here we go, into my artwork. And then we've got all of our USBs that I've downloaded onto Minecraft Studio. So I'm gonna go into our images and then I'm gonna select one of our fairies here to use. So I think the one I'm gonna play with for this particular one, let's have a look at the selection that we've got. I think she would actually be perfect for this. So if we were to sit here, almost that she looks like she's sat looking out the window. Um, if I sit here to the back of our file like that, her elbow now appears to be resting on that window ledge, which works really nicely for this. Automatically, it just works. It makes sense. So I can see here that I want to crop this image because we've got a foot hood sticking out here. So if I take our overlapping window away, and all we need to do is crop 
just up from there. And if we bring this back into the equation and sit it just here, there we go, it works just like that. So I'm going to highlight over the two of these. And when you're highlighting over anything, it will automatically select it. So I'm just using my left um, button on my mouse here and dragging over with my cursor and it creates that sort of stitch line. And that will now highlight both of these files. So if we go into our layers, that sits at the top of the tabs just here, you can see at the moment that section and that section are highlighted, which are those two here. So again, if you were to then select this one, it will now have just selected that. So going back here again, over those two files, highlights those together. Now, if we select group, it's automatically compressed the two of these into one file, which you can see now sits within the top here. And because essentially we've just made a brand new file, it's taken it to the top of the page. So this is now sat as the top layer on front of absolutely everything. So we can go back to our window here. And as we go back to our window, we can drag this over. Here we are, like that. And then using our beneath layer, if you like, we can then take the brightness right up from it so it looks like it's a window that's maybe open slightly ajar and she's looking out of it. Or she could be in a room where there's a window directly then on the opposite side of the room and the light's casting through. So I'm then going to highlight over these two like this and group those two together. So if we bring our texture that we made back into the picture and bring in our stone wall, I want these to blend together slightly um, more fluently, more than they already are. So if we go to our effects here, we're still on this page. Whilst this one is still um, actually selected, what we can do is play with the edges. So using the rectangular function, you can see here we can fade that down and start to blend that in. We can use the circular function. And this is more of um, an oval image. So this one is probably going to work to our advantage. You can see here when we're looking at this, we still have a slight curvature within the shape. And that can really play a big part in the way that your edges would fade down on an image. If you were to use a square image and use the circular function, automatically the corners are going to disappear first. So with this one here, um, you can see instantly using that circular function, it takes it down in almost like an oval scale. Now the background for this at the moment, which with that texture we created is quite orange. It's giving like bright orangey brown tones. So if we go to our saturation, we can reduce that down to make it more of a stone effect. Now that then automatically ties in with this. So if I just revert that again, back to its original state, you can see it's quite bright. It's got those copper tones running through it. But then we can go even with our saturation. So you could rainbow it if you wanted to, to get completely different effects with this, but still the stone is standing out quite a lot from there. The hue, you could change that as well, maybe get a different effect with this one, but the saturation will still keep it within the same hue, but it'll be turning it monochrome. So if we go through here, automatically, I'm quite happy with the gradient that we've got there. And as well, this is still very bright in the center, so it's still the main focus point of our background. Now, even though we've taken the saturation down, we could then bring the brightness back up just a little bit. There we go. So we've still not got a dull image. It's still got bright aspects to it. So now what I'm going to do with this one, because the way that it stands at the moment, it's still in two independent pieces. I'm going to group this together. And because I can see that I only have two files, I can select all and group. So grouping these two together like this has now welded those in one piece. So when you are selecting multiple files, sometimes, like I did previously, I grouped over to select just those two because I still had remaining elements around my page. So selecting all has grouped every single icon that is on that page at once. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to build up some foliage that goes around here. Now dip in to and from the USBs. So walk back to London, London land. <laughs> I was going to say walk back to London land then. And so walking back to Wonderland, I'm going to go into our florals and we have a beautiful um, set of foliage that's in here. Now you can see at the moment, it's got slightly um, aged colorway to it. So it almost looks like a, a part of um, either dried floral. So we're going to make it green. Let's bring it back to life. Here we go. So I'm going to take it into a really nice sort of olivey green tone here. 
And then I'm, what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to get the scaling just right. So we're going to almost create almost a wisteria or an ivy growing around this particular section of the wall. So we'll have it growing up to start with. And then what I'm going to do with this one is duplicate. So I'm going to keep duplicating these and actually rotating them round. So I'm going to paste again. There we go. And drag that one up, the duplicated one each time. Again, paste again. Go around here. And what I'm going to do is start to arch these as they go around the window. There we are. Take this one up to the top and then rotate that one around. So you can see here I'm following the arch of that window and taking it over the edge. I'm going to paste again. Now the reason why I'm pasting every single time is that so then we don't have to completely recolor and resize the image every single time that we want to use it. Here we go. So I'm going to bring this one up here like that. And then what I'm going to do is bring another one just down here. So we've sort of gone across this section of our image here. So if I paste again, and then bring this one and actually make it much smaller. What we can do is have some like veining going off with the, from the ivy. So I'm going to do a little bit here. I'm going to copy and paste that smaller one now. There we go. Bring that so it goes off towards the edge. Just like that. And then I think I'm going to do the same again. I think I want another large one first. I'm going to copy and paste that. And bring that around here. Have a bit going off to this side. And I think we want some trailing down this side of the window. So if we duplicate our smaller one again, so I'm going to copy and paste that, rotate that round just here. There we go. And then start to paste that again, bring those round. And you can see just how naturally it starts to take shape. Now, the beauty of this is that the file itself is so easy to work with that we've taken it as a sprig and turned it into an ivy, which is just amazing. So I'm going to go and duplicate this one and just start to play with it. Start to have fun with the idea of which way it's starting to actually flow. There we are. So I think I need a little bit more of that just bringing down to this side. So, so far in working with Minecraft Studio, what we've created essentially is our own background. We've actually duplicated and cut into one file and added in our fairy. We've then got our ivy that we've used from one file again so far, but now I'm thinking about this, looking at it and saying that we need a splash of colour. Now this means we can actually turn this set of trailing foliage into something completely different. So I'm going to go into the web download that we've got, um, into our web download, into our florals. Let's have a look. And as well, for your web download, you can find that in the description uh, below the video as well. So do check that out after or before you've watched the video, because then, of course, you can recreate exactly what I'm doing here or do it in your completely own style. So I'm going to enlarge this and I'm going to copy and paste it and just off center it ever so slightly. So we've got like a thicker, fuller image of that color there. And then I'm going to group those two together like this, and I think we want it to be more of a purple shade. So we're going into our hue, we're going to take that right through until we get to purple. There we are, that is perfect. So I'm going to scale this down and start to bring these in. Now what these are going to represent is almost like a wisteria. So I think these are going to work really well in here. So I'm just dotting these around in different areas. Um, Again, taking some of them down here to bring that colour in, tying it up. And as I'm actually starting to um, build this design, I can see instantly where else I'm wanting to place colour, where else I'm wanting some design work to come into this. So I'm going to bring some more into the window to the edge. I think I'm going to leave a gap here because I think one of those lanterns would work really well there. So into the USB again, I'm then going to go into the lantern and bring one of these in just to add um, a pop of colour, an area of brightness. I'm going to bring that here next to the window. Continue to paste some of the wisteria flowers. There we go. And what I love about Minecraft Studio and showing that, um, especially within this demonstration, is that a flower that's designed to be probably popping up through the grass of a garden can be used as a wisteria, can be used as something it wasn't necessarily designed for because you've made it that way. So I'm going to paste this one again. There we are. 
and I think I'm gonna put one more just a smaller one just coming off this side here there we go scale that down to a smaller section wonderful so you can see now we've got our wisteria growing around here on our eye vein we've completely constructed this image from scratch so in these files here we've got our book so I think adding this into the base of that window frame there make it look like she's looking out the window and she's reading so if we put that there and then just take the brightness of that file up ever so slightly so the brightness tool you can see here if I was to enlarge the book here and take the brightness right up I'm having it overhanging on the the white page and my purple background the brightness will make it a, either a completely white silhouette or a black silhouette now what this means as well is that if you were to have all of your individual files in black and you were to put them on your scan and cut map your scan and cut can see that outer edge and you can cut them now that's if something completely different if you would love to do something like that it, but that there is another option of which you can do but what i'm going to do is take the brightness up on here there we go scale that down and just bring that in around here so you can see the brightness has then just made it um, pop from the center but as well um, it has taken away that brassy tone that was it within the pages of the book and tied it in with what we've got so down here i'm thinking i'm going to want a sentiment maybe some foliage coming in from the sides and we could probably pop some of those butterflies in there as well so let's have a look through our web download which is just here there we go so in our images we have got our butterflies now these ones are completely different from the ones that you do get of course on that usb so an advantage of going for that download is that you've got all the corresponding artwork but in completely different ways and i'll show you some more examples of those as we go through um, i'm going to copy and paste some of our butterflies i'm going to flip this one round so it's facing the opposite direction and i absolutely love the flip tool on macraft studio because it completely changes the look and feel of an image just by mirroring it so again i'm going to take this one and pop that down here and then i'm thinking we need some greenery or something that actually makes it look like this could be maybe the turret of a castle and this is just a snapshot of that section um, so if we bring this tree in and really scale this up i'm going to scale out again so zoom right out from my page and bring that right up to the edge there we go what i'm going to do is actually crop this tree right into the side here there we go and i'm just going to take off that extra space because it just doesn't need to be there and then if i okay that instantly now that appears that there's a large tree growing up the side of the castle and you can see here it's overlapping from the window so i want to add some sentiments into our in actual image that we've got going on so what i'm going to do to start with is i'm happy with how everything's going and i do have slight overhang on some areas of course which we want to remove so if i zoom right out group over everything so everything is now selected on here so if we go into our layers you can see how many we've built up so far there is quite a lot of layers in this folder that we've created so if we group it that automatically then compresses all of that it can take a few seconds sometimes if you've got quite a lot of content that's now grouped all of that into one layer so i'm going to go into this and then to remove these sections off you'll notice now and this is something i get a lot of people asking me is that all of a sudden these areas here are all grayed out so you can no longer tile use your your knife your scissors or crop that's absolutely fine if you were to want to still use those functions what you could do is save this as a png file on a usb or on your computer drag it back into the software and these functions would then become available because it would see it as a brand new file what we're going to do is use our basic shapes to cut around that so we're bringing our rectangular basic shape here there we go and i'm going to enlarge it to the size of our image so i'm going to drag that all over the edges just like that and if we select to keep the inner that will crop off all of those out little bits and bobs that we no longer want and give us a really nice sharp clean edge to our to our particular image now what i'm then going to do is set this to one side for the moment and i'm going to make a sentiment now when i'm looking at this 
I don't want a sentiment that's going to detract from what's going off. Because, of course, a lot of people don't place the sentiments on cards because this is going to be a card front. But again, it would look lovely as a journal front as well. So back into the USB, I'm going to go into a walk back to Wonderland. And in our images here, I'm going to play with some of the, um, the files to create a background for our text. So if we bring this in, I'm going to go to, let's have a look, our text folder at the top here and add text. There we go. So I'm typing directly on top of this. So if I put, uh, let's have a look, if I put 16 today, there we go. And if I then highlight over this and make it so that all of the writing is centralized like that, we can enlarge it. So I'm going to scale it up. But with the black over the top of here, I think it just looks a little bit blurry, like you can't really see it very well. So what I'm then going to do is if we go into the color of our text, you can see here I'm actually changing the border. So we've changed the border and then I'm actually going to change the color of the text to white as well. So we've got all of that now changed to white. So if I just go back to show you those steps again, I'm just going to reverse this how it was. There we go. So what I started with was the text itself. So clicking on this function here at the top, the black box, I went right up to the white. Let me highlight our text. There we go. Right up to the white to actually set it in place. And this way we can now create the color of our text. So there we go. So there we are. I've caught it its attention now. And then the black one again. And I'm going to take that to white. So that we now have our text in place, but still I'm getting a little bit of an area behind where it can where it can still look a little bit almost confusing. So if we go into our effects, without adding a depth or direction of a drop shadow, we can add a blur radius. Now what that will do to our text is instantly give it an uplift. So like this, we can see straight away that's allowed it to stand proud from the background. Makes a massive difference. So if we then grab our sort of our emblem, our back layer, and duplicate this, so I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm going to bring in my image here, which will sit towards the back, because I want to just see a bit of background so I can layer these up. So if I take the brightness of this file all the way up to the top, bleach it all the way out, there we go. And if I send this, um, let's have a look, send it to the back, and then let's bring it forwards one step. And then if we sit it directly, let's have a look here. If we bring this in, we can start to see the color behind. If we sit it behind our sentiment, we can then enlarge that as we go around and it will form a mat and layer for this one. There we go, perfectly. So I'm gonna take this away. Then I know I can go over the two of those and group them together. So group those as they are. And then we can bring our sentiment back in just like that and sit it just down here. So you can see now everything is tied in together absolutely beautifully. So what we can then do is highlight over the two of these, group those together, and if we bring back in that overlay of that card shape, we can now go back to the front just as we were, and that there, we know that as we print it, will print accurately. So what I've actually got here in front of me, in fact, I've actually, what I've done is continue to add mats and layers um, and this is this is a function that I absolutely love doing. So what I then did on Minecraft Studio was added one of my textured backgrounds from that web download that we have. And you can see here, I've just added that border around on the top of here just to finish that off. And I actually cut it free because when I printed it, I thought, right, okay, I want to do something different. Now what I have here is my um, light board. I've got my light board here with me and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to show you that what I want to achieve is being able to see through the cardstock so I can work onto the reverse. Now, because we have this window arch just here, if I just switch this on and flip that around, I can see through where the window is sitting. Now, I've got some little um, lights here, some little fairy lights. Now, what this will do is add just a sparkle of light um, just to give that point of difference. And I've, I've added this light board so I can see exactly where I want to stick them because I want them on the reverse. So I'm going to start going around here with the bottom of the cable, adding a little bit of hot glue just to the side of the bulb. There we are. And I'm going to sit that one just down here like that into place. 
So I'm going to start in to add these on. I'm just going to hold it for a few seconds just to hold that in place as it dries because I want the first one to be properly, properly anchored. Now what I'm going to do is then shift this around and I can see where my next bulb is going to go. So this is taking Minecraft Studio and then completely, again, adding your own embellishments, your own finishing touches to the project itself. So I'm just going to press that one down, hold it into place. And whenever I do something like this, especially with hot glue, um, I always make sure to work onto a surface that's relatively cool. And the reason for that is instantly all of the heat is absorbed out of the glue, so it dries much, much quicker. If you were to hold this card mid-air and allow it to dry, it'll take twice as long because, um, of course, it will retain its heat. So I'm just going around the edges of here. And I'm just going to grab a little bit more hot glue and bring that one into the frame of the window. So again, I can see exactly where my sort of trellis is of those leaded windows. And then I'm going to put my last one in at the bottom just round here. So I'm just bending the wire because of course you won't see that cable. Put a little bit of hot glue just there and put that one in. Perfect. Now as that dries, I'm just going to quickly remove off here the backing layer of our foam tape. So take these away. Just like that. I'm just going to test them that they still work, which they do. And then what we can do now is actually turn our light board off. And I'm going to take the top one away. Lovely. And then I've got a piece of cardstock that's the exact same size. That then will sit directly over the back of this one, just there. And then I can fetch the battery tab just around here and fasten that to the reverse of our project, just like that. So what I'm going to do, and I will check out as well for you, do have a look at the website because we did have these fairy lights on our website, so I will double check to see if they're still there for you. If not, um, we'll have a look, but check the description of the video as well um, and all of the details for items that we've used. If they're on our website, we'll be there as well. Um, so with the project itself, you can now see, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that the instant difference of this when we turn this on is that you then get that subtle glow of the lights on the inside. Now what this would look really cool is if they were trailing up through the wisteria as well. Of course there's five bulbs on this string, there is some with ten I think and some with five, but I think that is just the perfect accent and it does get a little bit of light coming through on this side too. Now what you could then do is have this on an easel or a stand, um, but I absolutely love the little aspect of that light in there as well. So that's one example of utilising a Walk Back to Wonderland USB as well as with that web download on the Highlight Crafts website. So I'm going to show you a quick project now um, using some more features from that download to do something completely different, okay? So I'm going to take you through onto the software. Now on here straight away, we don't need to delete our project. Of course, we can go in and save this. So what I would then do is I would take my overlay off. Um, I would go right back to home and go into Save As. Now you can save it as an MCSX file, but I like to save them as a pro quality or a best quality. MCSX will save it as a Minecraft Studio file. That means you can still go back and edit this if you were to leave it ungrouped. So if we go into pro quality, into our PC, and on that USB drive, I could save it as, let's have a look, Project Wonderland. There we go. So I'll save it as Project Wonderland and save that on here. If we were to grab a new page on Minecraft Studio, just take our grid and ruler off and go back into that USB. So if we go into USB drive F, we then have through here Project Wonderland, which we can bring on and automatically it is there for us. So that's how you save your projects. And that's something I just wanted to cover for you as well, because I know a lot of you do ask about saving them and the best ways to do so. So I'm going to go directly into that web download now. And in here we have some fabulous images. Now this is the one that caught my attention and the one I was talking about earlier. Now with this, what I instantly thought was how can we make this even bigger and build on it? So what I'm going to do is grab it again and I'm going to use that lasso knife just to crop. Let's have a look at this. I'm going to crop around the base of that there. There we go. In fact, you can see there, I've just taken that edge off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel it I went quite freehand with that. I'm going to go around again. And what this is the beauty of it, you can just go back. 
go back, revert the process, there we go. Wonderful, so I've cropped off all the base now um, of that house. And then if we flip this around, we can start to place it towards the back. Let's have a look, send it to the back and build up our little castle all as one piece. So what we could do is add, let's see, we could add this one up here, I think. That would look quite nice up there. Then if I copy and paste that one, we've got another of that. And we could flip that round. So let's flip that, scale it right down. That could go towards the back, so send that to the back here. We've got another version of that here now. And then if I grab, let's paste it again. And then we can actually scale that up, put it here, and then send that one to the back. You can see how I'm starting to build this up into like a, a small little castle. Um, so let's paste it again. And then what I think I'm going to do is then just send that one there to the back. So now I've built up this sort of plethora of turrets, all these different um, elements and areas. So I'm going to just quickly zoom out of all of this and actually group all of that together. So I'm confident that that is now all in one piece. We can always go back and ungroup it if we want to, if we want to add layers in between. Um, but I'm going to start to just build up a foreground for this and some areas that almost are going to look like they're floating around. Now if I go back into the USB, let's have a look just up here, into the USB itself, into the images, there's some scene building elements. Now these are fabulous. And you can see again we have this little dormer roof here. So if we put this in, we can start to add this to the top of our turrets, adding that extra layer of interest and dimension. So I'm scaling these down and I'm going to duplicate these. There we go. Popping those into here. So I'm going to paste another one. So if I flip this one into that direction and scale this one right down, how cute is that? I absolutely love this. I think it's just fabulous. It's like model making on your computer. So I'm going to grab this one and change the direction of this again. Scale it right down. Pop that one here. There we go. And it's it's quite natural for it to be overhanging that edge because that's how it would appear. Um, I think with those ones, I'm going to leave that bit as it is, quite like that. But again, because I've put those on that layer, I'm then going to go in and group that again. So now all of those are welded onto there. So let's start to bring in some foliage and some trees. So I'm going to go back into our web download, into, let's have a look into our florals. Um, I'm going to drag a few of these out on here so I've got them and now I can use them bring some colour into it, and then let's have a look at, let's see in here, into our images, we'll use some trees, these will be perfect. So I'm going to grab a couple of these and start to build up a little bit of some foreground. We could send some into the background, I quite like these overhanging the front. And then if I grab a second one of these and flip it, we can then scale that right down. Let's crop off a little bit of that tree trunk, using that crop function again and sit these a little bit further, tucked into the scene, there we go. Now because we've added this splash of colour, I think it would look quite right to then add one of these into the background. So if we were to then send this tree to the very back, like this, we then have all of that in there as well. So let's start to add in some more trees, scale these down, you can see instantly already we're creating like a really magical scene that we've got here. I'm thinking, can we put this tree in there as well? Elongate it a bit, send it to the back. Probably pop that here so you can just see a bit of the greenery coming through. Now, the one thing that this is all automatically to me is lacking is a base or a foreground or something, some sort of structure for it to stand on to. So if we bring in from our, let's have a look here. If we go back into our USB and we go into textures, We've got a whole host to work from, and I've used number 43 here, which is a really vibrant green. So if we bring that down to maybe almost um, an olive tone, maybe a little bit more, there we go. Um, I'm going to use that circular faded function again. So fading that down, I'm just going to make it slightly narrower and scale it down. If we rotate this around, so it's rotated to 90 degrees, what we could then do is squish it down and then go to order and send it to the back, we can create almost a base layer or a foundation for our image. There we go, but we still have this line here that isn't really blended in very much. 
So if we start to work in with some of our files, we can go into our images and we've got our mushrooms in here. So let's have a look at some of those. This here will allow us to really sort of break that line, break that border and allow us to work into that detail. There we go. So add a couple of those into here. I'm going to flip one of those around, scale that down. And automatically what we're creating here is a sense of blending a seamless design uh, where our folders can just mingle. I'm going to bring the wizard in here. So if I actually start to zoom into our image a little bit more now so we can see in closer detail. Let's bring him in and scale him down. Sit him just here towards the front. Bring in some of our grass as well. So we'll put some of that now across the foreground so you can see now that line has become almost invisible. It was like it was never there. So I'm going to scale this one down. I think I'm going to make it slightly narrower. There we go. And pop this one down here. Now I'm noticing there's like a bit of a gap here. So this one is a really good filler for stuff like that. So if we go here and then automatically send that to the back, that's now filled that space for us. And I'm going to elong that a little bit, elongate it, and just taper it in a bit there. And then with our grass, I'm just going to crop that up slightly, probably bring that in a little bit and start tweaking it. Now, I think our fairies just absolutely need to be flying around around this seam. So we'll pop her yeah, buzzing around towards the top. So she's flying around the scene. We'll have, we'll have her with her wings. She could be sat on the ledge of the roof just here. So we'll have her there. And then let's bring in, we'll bring in quite a few of them. If we actually change the color of her outfit, so if we go into our effects into the hue, there we are. So we'll pop her up this side. So if we flip her around and just scale her down ever so slightly, there we go. So building that perspective, so she's towards the top. And I think we have a couple of them sat down as well. We have them sat on the toadstools. Um, and not on the toadstool. So if we bring her, she's not got her wings in this scene. So if we bring her down, she can be grounded. So she doesn't look like she's flying away. So she's on that little stump that we've created. I think we want some more foliage in here as well. And I absolutely love these little chimneys that you can just add in in little areas wherever you want to. So we could pop that towards the back, just there. So you're literally creating your own story, your own scene, a really magical setting that really is completely tailored to your own imagination with this, which I absolutely love. Um, so I'm going to flip that one round, pop that down here, and then let's bring another one of those in. So I'm going to copy and paste, pop that to this side and flip it. There we are. I'm just going to tape that in, scale it down, bring that one here. And then again, with some of those blue mushrooms to add that vibrant color in, I think that will look really nice just there. So these florals, we could tuck these in just towards the back there. So we've got a splash of that pink hue coming in. There we go. Just tuck those in. So if I zoom out of this whole image now, zoom out of the whole thing and group it, so the whole thing is now together, you can see you've created your very own world, your very own scene using again that USB along with the web download. So it's all there together. So you can see there, I've printed that one out. So we have an idea of what you could do with something like that. Really, really fun and playful. And again, we also have the project that we started with at the beginning. So two completely different outcomes featuring different aspects of the software and really sort of putting it to the test of showing how you can completely dissect or deconstruct um, a file from Micro Studio and make it your design completely. So I really do hope that you've enjoyed uh, the free monthly class today and I hope you can join us for the next one. Take care. Um, and also the download will be in the link as well in the description underneath this video. So do check that out. See you later. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.